whether there is mayhem and order, whether there is right and wrong, there will be a dichotomy. But none greater than the love of one hero for his semi-retired villainous wife. Meet General Hero, secretly the dashing and charismatic John Everyman, who fights for truth, justice, and the American way. For justice! And here, Adelaide Everyman, secretly still the villain Lady Malice. She is the most beautiful and cunning wife to General Hero. For power! Wait, what, what was that, dear? Shh. Nah. Okay. Their love, along with the fight for good against evil, remains as the world's greatest dichotomy. With their manservant, Tenchman! With their henchman, George, they live their extraordinary lives. Episode 2, Enter the Terrible Old Man. We begin our story at the desk of John Everyman, who takes calls all day for the customer service department of his employer, Scams. Hello, thank you for calling Scams. My name is John. How can I provide you with excellent assistance today? Uh, yeah, my computer hasn't working right since it got shot by my brother. Was it... an accident, sir? I guess you could call it that since my brother made a bet with me. Since I lost, he got to shoot it with his new rifle. Needs to say it ain't even turning on. Well, sir, I'm afraid that it would in fact void the warranty on the item. Why? Sir, you shot your computer with a gun on purpose. That's a voided warranty for sure. No way, that can't be right. My brother was the one who shot the damn thing. Besides, I paid 500 bucks just to get that warranty. Yes, sir, I, I understand that, but it only covers an accidental damage and a few other things, but not... Well, I can see why y'all are called scams now. Taking a man's money and trying to blame his constitutional rights on that. <sighs> Thank you for calling Scams. My name is John. How can I provide you with excellent assistance today? <sighs> As General Hero continues his day, we take you now to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Everyman, where Lady Malice and George are trying out a special new formula. Trust me, George. This is going to make you bulletproof for sure. I don't know about this. Seems like a terrible idea. Shh. Just quit being a baby, drink your formula, and we'll get the test going. This could actually kill me, though. No. No, oh, it won't kill you. The bullet, maybe, sure. But the formula is all ready for human testing. Couldn't we test this on someone? You know, anybody else? A random victim, you know? George, a formula like this could be devastating in the wrong hands. Which is why I made it. Now drink up. All right, fine. I knew I should have changed my last will and testament. Ew! This tastes like cough syrup, but from hell! Excellent! Firing in three, two... Ow! You shot my foot! You didn't even count to one! I was not ready for that! Ugh, George, you're fine. See? Not a scratch on you. You're just being a crybaby. Again. Mm. Does sting a bit, though. Of course it does, my dear henchman. For you see, when a bullet fires out of a gun, it comes out at an incredible speed and velocity. This Formula X is a sort of barrier which stops the bullet itself from penetrating. However, nothing can be done to stop the actual impact of force from the bullet hitting that barrier. That's why you should wear armor. The kinetic energy is still going off, causing bruising and perhaps tissue damage. However, it won't be nearly as bad as the bullet itself. Granted, that is mostly a hypothesis, as the impact could end up squishing your insides into jelly if you're not careful. Translation, still hurts, but you won't die? Technically, yeah, sure. 
Works great as a backup plan to bulletproof vests and armor, though. I see. So when are you gonna try it out? George, I'm the greatest villainous mine out of the market. If anyone tries to shoot me with a gun, I won't need this formula. And how's that exactly? Because I'll have outwitted them and shot them with their own weapon. Most other villains are so dumb. Remember the leper, Khan? Oh yeah, that weird little Asian looking guy trying to spread leprosy to the world. But everyone just kept asking him about those lucky charms. <laughs> Classic loser. That's the guy. He's so dumb. I mean, that is the worst plan. The best way to spread an infectious disease is to do it quietly. Duh! Who announces they're going to launch a biological assault on Megalopolis? The place with the most heroes! An idiot. That's who. Good point, I guess. Are you going to get that, or should I? Hmm, who's the henchman here? Is it me or you? Fine. Thank you for calling the Everyman Residence. Can I help you, please? Hello, General Hero. Is this the man? Why, yes, it is the man. Winston Hillshots. I need our help right away. This isn't General Hero. Who gave you this number? Why, Well, he's not in, so I guess you can just... I don't know, can you? I mean, it's not like I'm gonna take it anyway. George! Who is it? Yeah, it's just the mayor of Megalopolis or some bull, you know. Give me that! No! Hello, Mayor Hillchurch. I apologize for the hired help. You don't pay me. Unhired help. George is a little dense most times. Mean. However, he can be quite helpful. Now, what's this that I hear about leaving a message? Is this the nefarious lady malice? Me? What? Nefarious? No. I mean, why would the wife of a known superhero answer the phone at the place in which they live together? Right? No. See, I'm just a stranger who walked into this home and answered the telephone and committed fraud by pretending to be someone else. My apologies, lady. But I have a mission for your husband. Turn off the massage now. It's quite urgent. Can I trust you with this message? I don't know. I mean, I am a nefarious villain. What if that information gets into the wrong hands? Who knows what kind of devastation that could cause for our poor city of Megalopolis? Hasn't it suffered already? I don't quite care for the attitude and malice. And I don't care for the insinuation that I, a retired villain, cannot be seen as trustworthy. He does kind of have a point, though. Plus, you shot me! Not now, George. The adults are talking on the telephone. Oh, oh, oh! Bruises! All right, Malice. I need you to give this message to General Hero. As soon as you are able, the terrible old man is running amok at the local senior citizen bingo lodge. Causing all kinds of chaos. So, let me get this straight. You want my husband, General Hero, one of the mightiest beings on the planet, to take time out of his busy, busy, busy day to stop an elderly man from playing bingo too loudly. I mean, isn't that why the citizens pay taxes? To keep the elderly hidden and euthanized? You mean sedated? Right, hidden, euthanized, sedated. You hidden, euthanized. You know what I mean. Well, I don't. I don't actually. Anyway, the terrible old man is actually one of the world's oldest villains. We don't know what kind of trouble he's causing for us yet. But it's going to be bad. 
That's it. You have no idea what he does. Or what he's capable of. But that's what you want us to check out? A very, very bad old man. Shush, Gowie! You do have police, right? Or did I have them all killed when I was the ruler of the world? Every officer was sent in has left the building in fear. Some just shocked as if they've seen something cruel and unimaginable for words. Their hair even turned white. We think he may be trying to steal their youth. But it's not really easy to tell, since most of them are in too much pain or shock to even speak yet. You know what? Fine. I'll let him know. But now I'm curious to what this old man can actually do. Very well. Just be careful. I hear his vocabulary is so foul, even the English language cannot contain vulgarity. You don't get out much, do you, Mayor? We'll take care of your problem. Don't you worry your two-paid little head. Thank you, lady. Also, why I've got you on the phone, I want to mention the upcoming election promises. I promise. I still can't believe anyone voted for that idiot. George, fetch me my phone. Are you going to text General Hero next? What? No, he's at work. I don't want him getting fired again for having his phone. I just want to make sure I can record some of these insults that the old man uses so I can use them on you later. Mean! Meanwhile, back at Scam's call center. No. 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 You cannot just send the couch back because your dog peed on it. He's your dog. We can't train him. Nor can we replace the whole couch. It's not covered under the warranty. Fine, you can return the item as a voluntary repossession. No, we can't give you the money back. You're asking for us to pay for your pea-stained couch. Uh, thank you, madam. You have a wonderful day, and oh, thank goodness she hung up. Just in time for me to clock out. Oh, hi, John. How's it going over here? It's going well. I was actually on my way out. <laughs> Awesome! Well, I was wondering if you'd be able to stay a little late today. See, Todd is feeling a bit under the weather and might not be able to make it in today. Jennifer offered to take his place for the time being, but I know you could use some overtime, right? I mean, we've got 60 calls just waiting to be answered. Gee, that sounds... um... <laughs> Come on, it'll be great! I can't... <laughs> I, pardon me, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead and answer it. Okay. Oi, mate, you're gonna want to get out of there. Captain uh, Shelby, <laughs> that you, you salty old pirate? No, yeah, it's me. Get out of there, mate, or else you'll be doing a double shift. And I can tell you, number 37 is a right kangaroo. And how do you know that, Mr. Albright? I mean, Captain Shelby. <laughs> and no one else. Seven hours into the future, you dingus. I've told you before, Captain Shelby, that's not how time zones work. He's crazy. And I've told you before, I don't give a dingo's wallaby. That's how it is. Well, thank you for the heads up. Oh, and one more thing before you get up and go. Wear some sunglasses. I beg pardon? Yeah, trust me on this one. You do not want to see that. You will never get that image out of your head. Croc knows I can't. By the way, know any therapist? Because he's about to be a rich man. I do, as a matter of fact, but maybe later. Uh, thanks for the tip, Captain Shelby. Uh, see you later. Oh, and one more thing. Take care of yourself. So, John, you gonna stay and take calls today? I'm sorry, Sylvia. I'd love to stay, but Adelaide is needing me to pick up some dinner for us, and I just don't have the time. Hmm, well, if you're sure... I understand. Maybe next time. You can make it up to me by coming in on Saturday. Right, of course. I couldn't think of anything better to do with my time on a Saturday. <laughs> Alright then. See you Saturday, John. Remember, 8am sharp. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> A.M. <a>. Sharp. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Senior Citizen Bingo Lodge. <sighs> B-41. You suck my battleship! Battleship! <sighs> oh, 22. Jenga! Sir, do you really need to yell after every item being called? I don't know! Does your face always have to look that stupid? I'm just a minimum wage worker, sir, as it's uncalled for. You know who else is uncalled for? You! From your mom! <sighs> sir, with the limited powers vested in me, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Yeah! Then let me give you a party gift! You see this little doohickey here? She's really shiny, ain't she? Well, guess what? When I pull this little trigger, your head's gonna go BOOM! So keep calling those g numbers so me and old Betsy here can win us a turkey! My name is Gertrude, you old coot. <sighs> Man, that, that name is horrible. It's worse than my name. Eh, uh, what was your name again? It's Nanya. Nanya? Nanya! Business! Now let bingo, people! Oh, my hearing aid! <sighs> Fine. G1. You suck my submarine! C25. That Professor Plum in the ballroom with the d That's not even a valid piece in the game! And that's not PG-13! Well, there ain't no C in bingo neither, sugar t So you keep calling them d numbers! While the terrible old man causes mischief and mayhem, we return now to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Everyman, where General Hero is just coming home. Adelaide, darling, I'm home. Welcome home, my love. Mm. Ew, gross. Get a room. George, we have a house. This house. You get a room. Touché. Technically, we have all the rooms, too, so maybe try the gutter? Very funny. There's always the neighbors. Yes, but they don't like the wild animals in their homes. Remember when Mrs. Nesbitt found the raccoon? It was still me. It was still awful. Do you want to hear the message Mayor Hero Church left or not? Well, I do now, but no one had mentioned it. Well, he said that you and Malice are gross and should be nicer to me, or else eviction! That's not even kind of true, is it? Yeah, you can't blame me for trying. Yes, yes I can. Anyway, how was work? Terrible. That place is soul crushing. I think I'm going to have to start looking for another job. Oh, I can What? Anywho, that'll have to wait, my dear, for there is a villain lurking in... Where did the mayor say again? The Senior Citizen Bingo Lodge. Right, old people jail. Also, I heard that everyone left crying. I totally want to get pictures for science and record everything for posterity and science. Yeah, that's good journalism. You're going to sell that to the papers again, aren't you? What? Me? No, that would be unethical and so cruel to the hardworking members of our community's police force. Can you imagine the humiliation and shame they bring on their families and friends? These these clean people who have never done a single thing wrong in their entire careers. These fine officers who never assert their power over other civilians. Right? Especially over the poor minority. All, all right, hun. I, I get it. Just... Try to keep the names out of the papers, eh? Poor Dick Detective hasn't been the same since that last journalist took a closer look at his diary. It's his fault for being a grown man with a diary to begin with. Well, his paranoid issues aside, Dick is one of the best detectives this side of Ratman. And a lot less creepy. That too, old chum. We get so much angrier. No, that's just Captain Australia. I told you not to eat his sandwich, but you just went and had to do it. Oh, right. Uh, we should go to see what's going on at the Bingo Lodge before it gets too late. I've been wanting to watch the latest episode of Recreational Parks and Governments. To the gargoyle! That poor thing? Han, haven't we taken that poor run-down car out to pasture yet? It's almost literally running on one wheel. It's 
fine. It's good. It runs. Fairly. But all right. But it'd be so much easier to fly, you know. But we first met in that car. What? No, we didn't. We met at the explosion at Terminal Velocity set off. I mean, uh, our first date was in that car. Nice try, darling. But I remember that our first date was at the county jail. You looked so lovely in those handcuffs. That was not our first date. I know. I'm just having a bit of fun with you. I, I remember our first date. It was at the uh, movies, right? Nope. Oh, hey, would you look at the time? It sounds like the Senior Citizen Lodge could really use our help. So how about we pile into the gargoyle and get out of here and forget this conversation ever happened? To the gargoyle! Away! Take it down a notch, George. As our heroes rush over to the Senior Citizen Lodge, the terrible old man continues to pass on his menace. <sighs> D-13. You're... Mother sunk my battleship! Uh, A32. Can we stop now? We've been playing bingo for the past eight hours already. I need a break. And from the s oh, s smell of this place, the other citizens could use a change of clothes. Hey, I'll tell you when I'm done, you hussy! Just as soon as I get this bottle open! Sir, you drank all of your bottles. You've had two. Count them two. 24 packs in just the last hour. Yes, time for more beer! Break time! Need me some nectar to guys! Uh, I also need a pee break. Well, you better make it quick, terrible old man, or you're gonna be the one who breaks. What the sh** does that even mean? Is your mommy right there for you? Sounds like something out of a sh** podcast! Burn. Now is not the time, George! Ugh, that was the fourth wall this week. So, who the hell are you supposed to be? I am General Hero, protector of Megalopolis, guardian of all that is good, fighter of truth, justice, and- You're wearing your pants backwards like an idiot! George? Yeah? Not helping. No. Who are you, old man? That's the terrible old man! No one knows his true name, for it was lost to the sands of time! I'm not- He's so old that they said that he was old when the earth was young! Seriously? He is so old that Cain and Abel were in his yearbook. Can you please stop? He is so old that he still remembers when the Lord created dinosaurs. Well, that explains my first wife. You f done? What? One more. One more. He is so old that the Big Bang was his first time. I'm proud of that one. Yeah, I can't believe I said through all of that. But your boyfriend over here is right. I am t terribly drunk. So hold still so I can shoot the both of you at once! I don't think so. This fight's already over. Now put the gun down. I know! You should really get some more heroes to fight me! More fair that way! I'll send you whippersnappers back to your, your mothers! You know, I was really hoping for some great insults, but so far even George is getting better insults in. Ooh, burn! You know, after I'm done with these two Nancys, I still got some booze? Hey, where's my booze? Dad, never must have drank it all! I can't believe I left the house for this. Ugh. Oh, no, Missy. You left the house for this. <laughs> Heat shield, activate! Oh, my eyes! It's in my eyes! It burns! Should have listened to Captain Australia. That, whew, I'm going to see the therapist now, too. Whew. That's not what your mama said when I showed him to her. <laughs> now that's what you get for trying to sink my battleship. It'll never go down that easy. Remember the Alamo! Because you were there. Thank you, George. I won't need to pay for a therapist later. Why would you do that? Why is it so scarred? It's like it was set on fire and set through a meat grinder. Oh, I will never sleep again. <gasps> Ah, ah, ah,
Yes? I've warned you about the sight, John! I've warned you about the sight! I am so sorry to have doubted you. This is the second most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my eyes! You better crocodile's kangaroo you are! Also, I remember those pictures. Hilarious. I've gotta go now. So, now that we're all well acquainted here, why don't you get your old man some more boozing for the cruising? That's not even a saying. It was about 70 years ago. Now, let's get some more bingo going. I need me some more booze money. Your presence is making me feel sober. I hate being sober! I can't imagine why, but I need to take you to jail, terrible old man, for justice and for my eyes. Don't worry, I'll just have your mother bail me out again. How dare you? Sonny, I know everybody's mother, biblically. <laughs> Is that like an Adam and Eve joke, or? You know what? I like your style. I think I'll shoot you last. Oh, George. Well, what do you know? My aim was off. I swear it hasn't happened before! That's it, old man. I'm taking you to jail. Hey, hey! I got you something. It's a bird that don't got no wings. What do you know? He perched himself right on my hand for you two. Now get out of here, you little, you little doofus! Well, aren't you gonna punch him? I have to respect my elders. Even when they're not respecting you? Hun, I love you, but that's just dumb. Plus, he did just shoot George. I'm actually okay, though. I think your bullet- Oh! Oh, um... It must be a miracle! You're not dead for now, George. And I love you, but I can't punch him. He's old. He won't respect you until you punch him, though. It's how old he is. You gotta punch him to prove you're worthy. I'm still okay. Well, I guess. How is he okay? Oh. Mm. oh. Hmm? Too much punching? Well, I haven't been this sober since my last beer. You better get me out of this wall, pal, or I'm gonna make you wish I was drunk. Considering your state, I'd say you should just retire. Retire? Hey, you know what? I was gonna go easy on you, because you look like a flaming fig, but now, now I'm gonna hurt you like no other person has hurt you before. Oh, dang it! Why does he keep trying to shoot me? This really good or really great? What the hell? Dang! Oh! 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 Did you actually let him reload, Hun? Just now? Uh, sorry, I was just kind of wondering how George isn't dead. I mean, it's like seeing a man walk on water. But very poorly and clumsy. It's really bad. Maybe he's firing blanks. I mean, at his age? Who knows? Worry about that later. Go stop that terrible man before he hits one of those old geezers that George keeps trying to hide behind. I have any! Sorry! When is that thing going to run out of bullets? Enough, old man! You're going to run out of bullets soon enough, and I'm not going to run out of fists for your face! Oh, thank God! Yeah? Well, I got something more devastating for you, Nancy! Oh, I don't think so. Why don't you go take a lamppost, then stick it straight up your without a healthy dollar for Well, the other hand until you then shove that <laughs> just so I can finally call you Darth why do you keep her president button Gertrude I need a nurse I think I hurt my lumbago I'm falling and I can't get up again I need my life alert I I think I need to lie down for a minute I kind of wish I had recorded all of that. Wow. That made me hurt a little bit on the inside. 
Dang. How are we gonna stop that? That was more devastating than when Ratman lost his parents to that clog! With justice! Hey, hey, you melted my gun! That, that's some kind of heat vision witchcraft or something like... We used to burn people like you to that stink in my day! Dove costs you get why not? George, how are you not bleeding? Or dead? Or injured? Or something? Um... Magic? Certainly not a secret bulletproofing formula. Nah, no way that could ever exist, right? Right. Well, all right then. As always, terrible old man, justice prevails over crime and mayhem. But those little scars will never heal. That's true. Not even a little, kid! And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you, Tom Fuller and Pugs! Uh, I guess I'll go to the geriatric home for the clinically insane, huh? <laughs> Where you'll hopefully never see the light of day again for my mental health. Uh, I'll get a window room, I swear! One more thing, just so we know he doesn't make any more offensive sentences. Here. Why? Why do you always carry duct tape at all times with you, honey? In case George ever decides to open his mouth about my work, which reminds me, come here, George. Our heroes have captured the terrible old man, but what other dangers lurk around the corner? Will General Hero ever heal from the mental scarring? Will George ever get to use any of those insults on anyone? Will Lady Malice's recording make it big on YouTube? Find out next time on The Dichotomy. Special thanks to our supporters. The Dichotomy is written and directed by Samuel, the right hand of Doom Fuentes, and Alyssa Arcane Razzle Lanning. Produced by Catherine Stanley. Theme music written and produced by Alexander Nakarada. Starring Samuel Alejandro D. Fuentes as the narrator, General Hero, and George. Alyssa Lanning as Lady Malice. Jacob Wandering Scarecrow Burks as Mayor Winston Hill Church and Captain Australia. Kayla Firefox Valderas as the Bingo Hall Caller. Shay Lunacorva Holm as the Scams Phone Caller. Jose Kage as Sylvia. Midnight Marshal as Senior Citizen and Connor Not Shade Goff as myself. With special guests, Well Hay Productions as The Terrible Old Man, and Giggles as Gertrude. If you'd like to donate, please follow the link. Like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know what you thought of today's episode. Also, pull your goddamn pants!